take this opportunity. Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. We are going to provide our highly on updates for the week. Uh, this is a product that I've done here as of late for the last year or so, uh, trying to help uh, do my small part in sharing what I feel like is uh, a fantastic opportunity here going forward. We're going to talk about the opportunity in this uh, company uh, and what it means to be an investor, what the reality is of the current situation is, um, how it could compare and contrast with uh, some of the other competitors in the space that are trying to make their mark in EV. And finally, we are gonna talk about um, the, the investment itself, which is why a lot of people tune into the message because they actually are uh, invested in this company uh, as I am for full disclaimer. I know there's going to be some people that catch the video uh, and need to understand that I am a share owner in the company, uh, 12,200 shares uh, as of this video. Um, I do own about 40 long call contracts as well. Um, with the latest digression in the stock price, um, we are yet being provided another opportunity to uh, purchase more shares. I'm going to be extremely, extremely conservative in my um, opportunistic um, new purchases of shares. Uh, I have not bought shares in Hylion for many, many months, actually. I don't remember the last time I bought shares. My position is established and it's complete, quite frankly. Uh, it's, um, it, it is what it is. And it's a, a hold right now for me on the existing shares. However, I do split up my, um, my share positions so you, you guys can kind of understand my mentality. Um, I'm not one to look at it holistically, uh, which if you do look at it holistically, um, you take the number of shares and you can get the average share price that you've entered into the stock. Mine is around $9.00. Um, I've purchased block of shares above $9 and I've purchased shares uh, below $9. And in the sheer reality of stock market investing, um, we're below that cost basis right now. I'm not really too concerned about it. Anything less than $10 right now is a, is a screaming buy for what I'm going to share with you guys as far as my perspective on what this company uh, means uh, through opportunity, provide some level of clarity on um, the, uh, the risks that people are willing to take in life, uh, compared to this company, which I take all kinds of abuse on this. And at the end of the day, it is just a stock position. I did. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't define me. Um, my relationship with Hylion does not define me. Um, my, my holdings in this company and my opinions about this company do not define me. Um, I uh, gladly provide this uh, every week to a would-be audience, and it feels right. It absolutely feels right. I, and I think it speaks to the conviction that is necessary in a company like this to understand that this opportunity, as it evolves over time, which it uh, has not uh, materialized at all um, since it's gone in, on its large uh, downturn and really leveling off in the stock for um, the better part of the last 12 to 15 months. Uh, let's be real. The stock has not moved at all. Uh, and I think when we look at the long-term term charts, uh, it tells a story of a, of a company right now um, that is basing, uh, that is uh, doing things behind the scene that are not providing any type of catalyst to the stock. And, and when those things come together in a little bit more of a material way, um, that is what is going to inevitably move the stock north. Uh, until that happens, I don't see anything changes uh, with the drift right now going on in the stock. I, we get good news on the stock and it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. And that's uh, indicative of a company that is in a prove it stage in that there are metrics that are assigned with this company and expectations that are assigned to this company right now in the eyes of the stock market. And if they can't deliver on those fronts, then it will continue to remain recessed. It's just that simple. Um, the company can say whatever it is they want. They can do as many ride and drives as they want. 
Um, but until they start to turn out what I would capture to be material in one word, um, the company is not going to move. And whatever forces of nature need to come together, and they, they are out there, and we're going to talk about some of those things when we get into the reality uh, of the situation, those things are looming. And although they are looming, and I do believe that they provide a significant catalyst for the the stock and the company both, uh, I don't think it really matters much right now because those things have not come together to turn out anything material. And even the latest announcement on the Carno generator fits into this category. I think it's just one additional layer to this ever-evolving Hylion story. And we are casting a very, very wide net right now in looking at what type of opportunity Hylion can bring in uh, by these looming catalysts out there on the horizon. So I'd like to welcome everybody. Um, this is uh, put quite simply uh, by my own uh, motivation uh, to put this out. Um, I have no affiliation whatsoever with Hylion, uh, which speaks to my, um, uh, my uh, blue ocean and my ability to speak openly about my feeling about this opportunity. I don't, um, I, I don't shy away from uh, my criticism of the company, nor do I uh, shy away from uh, speaking to people with regard to what I see in this opportunity. All right, so sit back and enjoy. If you are interested in the space, I'd highly encourage you to kick over to highlyon.com. There's fantastic information there. And you guys need to join the Discord group as well. I always try to put a little bit of a bug in everybody's ear to make their way over to that. Guys, it's free of charge. And where you would be quick to criticize an opportunity like this, um, the opportunity is uh, very well alive and uh, apparent right now. Uh, and some of the access to information that you could seek out uh, you can seek that out free of charge. And I think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be interested in this story when it does actually show a little bit of strength and show a little bit more uh, transparency that they are going to be able to turn out results material in nature uh, when some of these things come together. Uh, but why not get in early? Uh, why not, you know, take a little stake in the company, take a little bit of stake in your own personal knowledge and, and pursuit of said knowledge? Because um, the folks like myself are from a small corner of social media, um, trying to uh, educate people up on the edu the opportunity that exists with this company and what they're trying to do, why they're trying to do it. Um, I, I don't think necessarily that Hylion needs to look at this as a competition between Nikola and Hyzon and, and or Tesla in, insofar as one is going to win out and the rest are going to falter away. I, I think that's a lack of focus. I think the focus needs to be on um, what I would dump, dub the opportunity. And I'm going to talk about that now. It's really the intro to this weekly series on Hylion where I'm going to talk about what I feel like the, the opportunity exists. When I'm going through this deliberation, my friends, I don't want you to misconstrue as I explain from my lens what I feel like the opportunity is uh, with Hylion, rather the opportunity in the industry as a whole, okay? Now, <clears throat> we've always been provided the clarity to understand that Hylion does not need to dominate the class eight space to carve out its niche in this uh, EV space, okay? Um, they have their own way of going about this, which is unique in nature. Again, kick over to hylion.com to find out uh, their range extender solution that they're bringing to market through their Hypertruck ERX, as well as their hybrid product, which is available today uh, in the market for retrofitting of existing Class 8 trucks, as well as the opportunity to have that hybrid uh, installed off of the line uh, for those fleets that opt to do so. The opportunity that I speak of is a $1 trillion dollar industry that services our goods and the transport of said goods from point A to point B. Okay. And the opportunity that I speak of is Hylion potentially winning out on 
a, a portion of that business. So we've always earmarked one to 2% of that industry really could be the, um, the penetration rate that Hylion could enjoy uh, to actually find success and to find that material benefit that we're looking for with the company. And again, until they find that material benefit, there's nothing in the way of a stock owner is going to uh, find that material benefit until that's reciprocated on the side of Hylion. But the $1 trillion industry really speaks to the size of the addressable market that Hylion is going after. And if they had no penetration whatsoever uh, in that market, um, you might have a little bit of case to say, look, this, this company is, is in, tr in real trouble. That's just not true. The opportunity now in taking those preliminary steps to penetrate this class eight market exists through the Hypertruck uh, Innovation Council. Uh, it exists through the looming uh, fleet trials that Hylion has earmarked coming up over the next couple of quarters going into 2023. Uh, as far as any progress material that the company could potentially make this year um, has been chalked up to and codified by their yearly earnings projections between two and three million. Um, those are immaterial in nature and they are inconsequential uh, to uh, any type of bottom line uh, solidification of the company's place in the class H space. Uh, 2022 is a loss, my friends. Let's just chalk it up to be just th that with regard to the stock price. With regard to the company, not so much. The company is progressing along a timeline right now that has been laid out by Thomas Healy and uh, Sherry Baker on um, multiple uh, calls, quarterly calls uh, in the past here. So going into Q3 and Q4, I would expect that we are just updating on the progress that's being made on that timeline. Me personally, I'd love to see a shift to the left in that timeline. I would love to see um, Hylion actually coming in ahead of the numbers uh, as opposed to uh, a, a continual shift to the right uh, in those numbers and timelines and expectations. But hey, it is what we it is. It, it we have what we have right now, and we know what we know historically about. Um, where this company has been and, and where they're looking to go. But that penetration that we're looking to, to gain into that $1 trillion industry is going to come by way of our penetration to major fleets out there. Now, the order book is uh, growing. Um, we haven't heard a whole lot here as of late, which has got me a little bit antsy. Um, and the bears are all over this, and rightfully so, rightfully so. Um, if this company was providing such a dynamic product, it would um, be forthcoming to expect that those orders would also be forthcoming and the order book would be uh, being built up. That's just not happening. Uh, and for whatever reason, if companies want to wait to a little bit closer to uh, major certification that is uh, looming, uh, then so be it. Uh, I can only suspect that once those catalysts are uh, met, that the order book will accelerate uh, in in its in its count, and and that's my expectation right now is that because we don't have orders coming in, um, I'm chalking that up to be somewhat premature in a year that's immaterial anyway. I mean, orders aren't going to mean anything to the bottom line, nor the top line until they can uh, scale up and start to queue up who gets um, their reservations first. But. Right now with the opportunity, I wanna digress a little bit, take a step back. We've talked about the opportunity in a $1 trillion industry, all right? And it's gonna come full circle when I discuss and shift to the reality of the current situation, uh, coupled with what I feel like is the opportunity in Hylion, okay? Right now, Hylion stock, $3 a share. It's $3 a share, just throw it out there. The opportunity that exists with a $3 stock price is, really unbelievable. And when you look at the, um, the history uh, of this company, I've had people who have hit me up and look, Ryan, it's a mistake. I've had that. That just came as early as Friday before putting this video out. It's a mistake. Every investor makes a mistake. I just, I don't look at it that way. I don't look at it that way. I don't look at the future prospects of a stock holding 
based on its past performance. And that is about as cliche as you could ever give as an answer, but oh, how true it is. It, let's just imagine for a moment that I drop my entire position right now. What I'm assuming is that there is no opportunity left in the stock to the, to the upside. What I am assuming is that because the stock now has uh, uh, fallen back and has kind of normalized at this current stock price in between three and five dollars, let's just be real, that there is absolutely no chance whatsoever. I'm awarding zero chance, five percent chance. Let's just say I am awarding less than a 50 percent chance that that company materializes into the future. Therefore, the decision to, to, to throw in the towel, to stop the loss, whatever that means, and exit the position now based on past performance. When I frame it in that particular context, guys, I know there's going to be people out there that are like, yep, Brian, that's exactly what you should do, which I also find ironic because I never ever dive into a, an arena of telling people what they should or should not do with a specific equity. Why is that? It's because the complex framework that goes into justifying a specific position like this um, with my current uh, uh, um, financial uh, posture and health, um, how my current position makes sense for me and why it makes sense why I have taken hard-earned dollars, which I think the people who would suggest that I exit the position somehow believe that I'm somehow struggling to make ends meet. Um, that is not the case, my friends, and it will continue to not be the case going forward. So the people who would suggest that I exit the position right now would suggest that somehow by holding the position, I'm going to somehow suffer on each of those different aspects of my life. Guys, I've held the stock ever since the beginning, okay? There was a short position that I exited at the end of last year to take a, a stop loss, but at the, at the same time, I have held a base position in excess of what most people in the retail community hold, okay? Now, I know there's a few people in the Hylion community that hold significantly more shares than myself, and I know that there's people out there that hold um, uh, significantly less shares than me. And I know that there's people out there that hold more shares with a higher cost basis and people out there that hold uh, less shares with a lower cost basis. At the end of the day, your stock position is yours and yours alone, just like mine is mine and mine alone. And for me to come on to social media and somehow presume that I have the answers to what fits for you and what is the most applicable for you with your own specific risk tolerance is very irresponsible. And it buys into what I feel plagues retail investors all too often. And those same people are really failing to understand the justification that I try to share in being forward thinking with my application, all things considered, I have a job, I'm very healthy, I'm very happy, I have a happy family. Outside of doing my highly on videos, I don't think about this. <laughs> I'm just waiting for 2022 to complete and for 2023 to start, because I know just like 2022 has delivered catalysts with this company, 2023 shapes up to be a transformational year for Hylion. Now, the bears would suggest that if I exit my position, 2023 does not stand a chance, let's just say less than 50% odds of being a transformational year for this company, 2023. Companies go through bad years, and people are awakening to the fact that the stock market also goes through bad years. We're going through one right now, which is one of the headwinds that really doesn't help in a market that is not conducive to being opportunistic on new technology. Uh, Hylion is suffering from that and many other headwinds out there in the market. Um, they came public and caught a bit of euphoria in the market 
uh, and I think prematurely so. And I think they're suffering from that. And I think they're actually suffering from the aftermath uh, of that right now, where the stock market is actually giving highly on an ultimatum uh, to prove it. And when it comes right down to my assessment on, uh, on the stock market, uh, asking Hylion to prove it through material results, uh, I think they're right. I think they're right. I don't, I don't think Hylion has deserved a premium. Um, Nikola trades at a premium right now. Uh, there is a massive, massive volume. And I don't think people could put these two in the same category with regard to the favor uh, that is being provided. I would love to have the favor of Nikola, even though Nikola trades at $5.50 or six bucks a share. Um, and I entered back into my long call contracts with Nikola just for full disclosure and for you guys so you know where my, uh, where my heart is. Um, because being opportunistic on a, on a company that has favor, look how that's worked out for Tesla. And I'm not a big Tesla fan. I'm not. I'm not a Tesla fanboy. I don't uh, like the cars. Um, I don't like the direction of the plug-in grid. I don't like California stepping up and saying, don't plug your cars in because we can't handle the load. Um, that that's the reality of it. And people would say, you're wrong, Ryan. Tesla is a great investment because we make money. Um, I don't invest that way. Uh, I don't invest that way. I invest in companies. And there's going to be people out there that would suggest that, you know, Tesla is a great investment because it's made shareholder shareholders money. No problem. You can continue on with that methodology. I bid you all the best. It's not about right or wrong. It's about whether or not you want to stake, take a stake in a company and whether or not you think it's going to pay off into the future. That's it. I bid everybody the best. I think Tesla is a fascinating company, okay? But as far as the stock price, I'm just not interested. Uh, and I don't, I don't leave this YouTube thing and, 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 and worry about whether or not I'm missing out on Tesla. I don't think that way. And I think a lot of people need to deploy a little bit more of a diplomatic approach to this opportunity with Hylion or any other stock holdings. It is just that. It's not about Hylion dominating the future. It's not about Nikola dominating the future. It's not about the fuel choice of the future, okay? And when I speak to the reality of the current situation, you're going to understand, or hopefully you do, because I tell you what, most of what is out there on the landscape right now just dumbfounds me. It's, a, it's amazing. It confuses me as to what people's motive are in trying to share a story, share a narrative. Do I want the stock price to go up? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But my intent is not coming onto YouTube and trying to raise the stock price. <laughs> I've done that every single day or every single week religiously for the last year. What has it done for the stock price? So to suggest somehow that it has the ability to manufacture hype behind a stock, I just don't buy that because I'm a realist. If anything, People would be asking me to stop doing YouTube if the two were correlated, right? That's just not the case. What we're doing here is coming on, uh, talking about any catalyst that exists, uh, the current stock price and what investors are to do, and to understand the potential opportunity as it uh, stacks up against the reality of the current situation and where Hylion sits in its progression toward um, that future, okay? The, the stock right now, I, I, I want to speak a little bit about it not being discovered. The volume is extremely low day-to-day, uh, -day, and it's not being purchased right now. Um, I think for those few that have been adding positions in the company, uh, have been doing so to average down on their position, but not necessarily because they're so excited about the company. Um, you know, there's scrutiny placed over the General Electric, 22 million shares that were awarded uh, as um, a, a condition of the Carno deal. Oh, I choose not to look at it that way. I really don't. I look at it much more... Uh, diplomatically, <laughs> and I look at it on the surface and would suggest General Electric, they don't need to make this investment, but they did. They did. Furthermore, it is General Electric's um, uh, position or 
uh, position of convenience, I might add, to actually enter into the stock at this position right here with the stock being extremely recessed, would it have made sense to enter into this deal on General Electric's side of the house and take such a large position in stock with the stock at $20 a share? Of course not. So when I share that with you guys as a community and I sit back and I look at this thing, it seems to me to be a tailwind for Hylion to have General Electric take such a big stake in the company um, and to own it as an institution that actually has its technology under the hood. Do they stand to benefit from it if the technology works out? Do they stand to benefit in the short time if the RNG Hypertruck ERX catches fire within the industry and industry actually realizes that they can transport goods from point A to point B using renewable natural gas. You watch some certain other channels and they would suggest that hydrogen is the only way and it's the wave of the future. Um, hate to be so independent uh, in my investing, <laughs> but uh, Hydrogen is uh, a fascinating option for the future, but the reality of the current situation does not speak to the opportunity over the short and medium term. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. And where Nikola is provided that favor in the market, they are not being scrutinized in the way of providing material benefit to shareholders. They're not. Okay. They delivered 47 rigs last quarter or last year, whatever it was, they delivered them to the dealers. Who's buying them? What is the markup? What is the cost of owner, owning some of these vehicles? And there are some articles on this that have just come out just this week on both the personal vehicle side of the house. There was one receipt that would suggest that a new battery for the new uh, vehicle is a $30,000 install cost. Furthermore, somebody took and actually did the cost breakdown uh, of uh, an actual EV vehicle and what they were paying was actually a break even. This actually came through the What the Truck interview this week, which I found was really quite good. I, I always enjoy those guys. Um, they do a great job, but they were talking about, and this was on their side. This wasn't on the Highland side. Um, this is what they were discussing with somebody who took on this uh, EV truck and really tried to run it uh, with some with some due diligence and wanted to get some of the information back on it. And they just were not getting the results. Furthermore, they were paying, I think, 37 cents a kilowatt, I believe, for the electricity, which at the end of the day was an absolute wash. It didn't they didn't provide any cost benefit at all um, to to the company that put that into rigor. What information do we know about Nikola thus far that is actually going to drive that TCO benefit? And this is something that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hard on the hydrogen channel now. Um, we all know who we're talking about. But to conveniently uh, script the narrative in a way that um, puts favor to what it is that you're trying to teach people on, I guess, speaks to the overall uh, discussion that we're trying to have on uh, how the fleets are going to adopt and incorporate some of these solutions into the fleet. Uh, we will see. We will have much more color a year down the line, two, three, five years down the line um, on having the discussion now. And I think it's very, very important. Uh, but the H2 channel would have you suggest that there's not going to be one single vehicle on the road using renewable natural gas just because it's um, it's bad for the environment or compressed natural gas is somehow it's going to dissolve and go away. Um, again, um, I, I like to sit back sometimes and I would like to say, look, um, is that an option? And I can choose and I can shift my channel. Uh, and instead of calling it the independent investor channel, I can call it um, the highly on wave of the future, or excuse me, the hydrogen wave of the future channel. Um, and I can I can sell people on the idea that the current reality is um, not real uh, and that we are going to, um, over the next coming years, shift to an all hydrogen future and that everything fossil fuel is going to be going away. 
there's a political uh, implication to this mindset that is unfortunate for me being apolitical uh, in my application. I do not uh, assimilate or I do not um, uh, I do not relate with any of the two major political parties in this country. I think it's probably the demise uh, of our current democracy anyway. Uh, so I don't buy into it. I don't spend a lot of time talking about it um, outside of just suggesting the people that they should probably have more of an independent application in their thought process in not buying into a political rhetoric, which is convenient at the time, rather than challenging what it is is available out there and what are the progresses being made on this front. And to suggest somehow that progress on the renewable natural gas front uh, and this compressed natural gas front is not being advanced right now is an escape to thinking and uh, a, a sleight of hand in controlling the narrative uh, to fit your narrative and what you want people to believe on your credible voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's too bad. But right now, the stock's not being purchased, uh, nor is there really any type of uh, tailwind with the stock. And that's all I'll say about that. People who know, uh, know that I'm frustrated right now with the current stock performance because, you know, these small movements with the company... Um, they should affect the underlying value in anticipation that they're going to provide material benefit in the future. But right now, hey, it's that's just not what's happening. Uh, and we're going to continue to monitor that aspect going forward. Um, the acceptance into the fleet is what I speak about on the opportunity. We really need these fleets on the onset to get them tested in the rigor of over-the-road Class 8. We need to have the domino effect and other companies uh, become privy to the bottom line cost savings that these guys are um, uh, experience. If they're not going to experience any cost savings, highly on dead in the water. Um, I'm investing in Hylion because I believe that there's a bottom line benefit. Uh, and this is something that the nickel investors always shy away from. They, they do not want to discuss this. What is the bottom line TCO? And even though Hylion, as frustrated as I am with them on coming out with an MS, MSRP on their rig so we can really understand and start to game out that TCO into the future, we cannot run TCO metrics on hydrogen right now with the cost of hydrogen being where it is. If you could get said hydrogen and it was actually um, available in nature, which it is not. Uh, again, the Nikola fanboys and the Nikola camp really like to exist where it fits their narrative um, in The Wizard of Oz. They like to exist in fairy tale land, and they want you to understand that this vision for a better future is going to just be waiting for them, like stepping through a, 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 a garden of tulips down the line. And the reality of the situation is they cannot provide a bottom line TCO. And if the hydrogen channel watches my channel just in secret, which I do of his, I watch his channel, I unsubscribed from the channel, uh, unfortunately, because I, I don't know who's sitting across from me. And that scares me. You ever talk to somebody who you just don't understand who the hell they are from week to week? I'll think I have an idea about the individual who's behind the mic, and then they'll shift and go wishy-washy and speak about something completely different. Then they'll go back on what they talked about. And oh, by the way, this is that. And oh, by the way, I'm just going to throw a, a search tag into Hylion just to boost up my numbers. That, that to me is a bunch of garbage, man. If, if you truly believe what it is that you're saying, believe it and stick with it. There's been no wishy-washy with me. No back and forth. I come on every single week and I share exactly what it is that I believe ab about. But I watch his channel when the when the stuff comes up and there's stuff that I would be interested in watching. Um, and there's no way that that would earn my subscription back because again, I watch it and I don't trust what is being said. I don't trust that it's genuine. And my my expectation of a channel isn't that it's all the time just fact-based. I believe most people have an element of salesmanship if they're coming and they're expressing what it is via opinion to be the best of their knowledge at the time that they share it. I, I just believe that there's a motive behind it and I don't I don't like it. So therefore I can't I can't support it. 
but the acceptance to the fleet is is huge and this is going to be huge when we start to really quantify the total cost of ownership what are these going to rigs going to be able to do for the fleets over the long haul to provide a step away from the current reality which i'm going to talk about next and provide that with a cost savings to the fleet highly on stands the best chance of actually providing that in to fleets right now that's my best educated guess. Uh, could I be wrong? Yes, I could be wrong. Um, have I asked certain people to come on to the channel and have an open discussion, not a debate? Um, you don't want to debate me, okay? It's not a good idea, but to have an open discussion about whether or not you think Tesla is the wave of the future, whether or not you think Nikola is the wave of the future, whether or not you think all of the aforementioned are going to dissolve away and is there's going to be a, a dark horse come out of and emerge uh, onto the scene and actually dominate what we're talking about here, right? I've invited all of those people onto the channel and none of them, none of them want to come on and actually do it. If I was invited on another channel, I would do it. If that individual wants to have me on uh, his channel, I would do it. <laughs> I have no problem with that because at the end of the day, this is about business. It's about business. And just like I quantified the stock ownership, whether it be low or high shares, whether it be a low or high cost basis, there's a lot of people out there that are genuinely interested in uh, furthering the discussion. And that's really what it's about, is furthering the discussion. Um, the opportunity exists in the need. And the, what, what do fleets need, okay? Do fleets need a, an advanced technology right now? Ask yourself, sit back. The advanced technology right now, let's just suggest for a moment that it is uh, Nikola, okay? A lot of people would have you believe that because, because they have the more advanced technology, that somehow that's going to translate to a fantastic company, and it's going to translate to a fantastic stock price. Um, that is a fallacy in application that I would bid you warning to apply. Okay. Uh, it's the same application in Hylion as well. It's the same thing. Okay. The same criteria that I'm about to express to you guys is the very criteria that goes into any stock, Procter and Gamble, Costco, Hylion, Home Depot, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter at all. Okay. But what we have to identify with is the usability of this product to drive bottom line benefit to the fleets. In other words, if you took Nikola as being that optimal product right now, and you introduced them to the rigor of the fleets, let's say now, let's say it doesn't even need to be now, let's say it's when Nikola is fully ready for full integration to the fleet. And let's just say for a moment that hydrogen is readily available, okay? Let's just suggest that Nikola if it were put into the rigor of over-the-road transport right now with the specifications that we know would absolutely be that driving technology that fleets would come back and say, we can drive a Nikola truck for seven to 10 years, okay? The initial onset cost was X and the bottom line total cost of ownership is Y, X minus Y is equal to the total overall savings to our fleet times the number of units that we have introduced to our fleet. That, in essence, my friend, is what we have the discussion about every single week. It has nothing to do with Hylion versus Nikola. It has nothing to do with that because each of these respected businesses, whether Nikola likes it or not, whether Hylion likes it or not, is going to be based against this metric. And this isn't just coming from me. This is coming from the big man himself, Thomas Healy. And I'm certain that the Nikola CEO and Elon Musk and all of these companies that are looking to uh, penetrate this EV space and provide transport in way of our logistics space would agree with me. They have to be able to provide a bottom line benefit. And I charge the Nikola camp with trying to answer my question. I've been asking this for the last 24 months with Nikola. 24, I identified right away that Hylion, contrary to public opinion, being behind Nikola 
is actually miles in front of the competition when it comes to this very element. The reduction in stock price, the price targets that go down, the very deals that are going on right now, the very institutional accumulation of these shares right now know exactly what I'm talking about. And right now at $3 a share, Guys, there couldn't be a larger disconnect between the goings-on at the company and this stock price. And I say that tongue-in-cheek to capture the last, let's just say, six months of stock and price action on the stock volume as it has uh, uh, transpired over the last six months, okay? Let's just call it for what it is, all right? I think when we talk about the need and we quantify the opportunity in the way that I've just shared with you guys, I think it speaks to uh, putting Hylion in a camp all of its own. Uh, I find it very, very difficult. And I've just declared to you guys through, during this video, I invest in both of them uh, for very, very different reasons, I might add, very different reasons. I'm investing in the technology with Nikola as they are right now ahead of Hylion in hydrogen fuel. There's no doubt about that. Nobody on either side of the camp would debate me on that. So as an opportunistic investor, I take a starting position in Nikola. Nothing too crazy. I would like to know what the H2 channel's actual position in the company would be. I would venture to guess that my current position right now as a starting position is actually larger than his. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something I will compare, because as convicted as this gentleman is to go so far as to change his entire channel <laughs> to speak about this very initiative, which I find is pathetic in nature, um, it really just kind of speaks to um, what I feel like gets missed all the time in this discussion when we're talking about the actual opportunity that each of these companies do provide. Uh, and Hylion is the largest position in my portfolio. It's the one that makes the most sense to me right now at this current juncture. <laughs> It'll all make sense down the line, guys. I I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it has been all good. It hasn't. It's been horrible. And for those people that want to come to me and say, I believe Thomas Healy is doing everything that he can possibly do. I'm not so quick to provide that level of satisfaction as a shareholder. No way. And I know there's people out there that do, and that is your prerogative to do so. I will not do that, my friends. There has been too many promises in this company that have been made since coming to public markets that have just been downright broken and shipped to the right. Uh, and I would say, prove it, Hi, Leon, just like the stock market is saying, prove it. At $3 a share, a share price, the, the, the stock market is, is challenging and providing that ultimatum that I speak of to highly on to prove it. So the stock market agrees with me. You can be as naive as a shareholder as you want. I could come on here and say, yeah, Thomas Healy is a god. He floats on water, walks on water, and he floats on a cloud. That's not true, okay? Thomas Healy is a human being. And where I would suggest that in five years, it's going to be fun to watch this man as a CEO. Uh, do I trust him? And is it part of my bullish thesis in the company? Yes. Has he done a phenomenal job in driving shareholder value? No, no. It's been horrible. And that's business. It's not personal. If he was to look in the mirror and say, have I driven shareholder value in this company? The answer would have to be no. So you can be as naive as you want about the current share price and somehow say that he's done everything that he can possibly do to drive shareholder value. No, I totally disagree with that sentiment. They have a lot of work to be done, and I believe that they need to improve upon this front. You can disagree with me if you want on that. I'm right. Okay, I'm right. You want to be naive and, and you want to suggest that maybe I'm too, being too hard on him. That, that's fine. It's business. He, he, the CEO's job is to drive shareholder value. People would suggest that what he does in educating through YouTube is part of his job. No, it's not. <laughs> Unless it drives shareholder value, attending conferences and, and, and ACT conferences and world expos, that's his job. As long as it drives shareholder value, sure. Selling the story, sure. As long as it drives shareholder value, driving top end revenue, yeah. As long as it drives shareholder value, progressing toward an end that is going to produce profits that the stock market can consider material, yeah. 
as long as it drives shareholder value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to give this guy a pass, mm -mm. no, I, I won't do that. Uh, I would be just as critical on him as any other CEO out there if the stock performance, this is criticism on the AT&T debacle, you know, by suggesting somehow that there's companies out there that get paid a lot more as far as CEO wages and somehow driving down uh, or going through loads of debt in the company, I think are somewhat futile. I think we need to look at this as a standalone and just suggest merely that the man's job is to drive shareholder value. And up to this particular juncture, at the time of this video, he has not done that. He has failed on that front miserably. It's a fail. I mean, you, you get zero credit from me. The stock has not gone up. The very measure of that metric is, my friends, let me wake you up to this fact, that the stock actually goes up, okay? And as of the last two years, the stock has done nothing but go down. And that's just the reality. That's the reality. Nice segue to what I consider to be the reality right now as we kind of shift and we look at the opportunity with highly ongoing future uh, into the future, we put it aside a second. And we look at the reality of the current situation. This is where it really gets interesting, okay? If you just put highly on a side and say, it's an investment for me, Ryan, that's awesome. You're all fired up, you're ready to go. Or no thanks, Ryan, I'll pass on that. See, I don't care what you do. <laughs> I don't care. I, I really don't sl lose sleep on bringing rogues of community members in. Um, what Do I think that there's a hell of an opportunity here? Yes, I do. Do I think it is much more opportunistic to think that the stock is going to go up into the future rather than down? Yes, I do. I, I do. Based on all of the things that I'm going to talk about here with kind of the specs and some of the reality of the situation right now when we look at the outliers, when we look at what's going on that aren't necessarily directly involved with Hylion, but absolutely indirectly involved with this movement that we have toward EV. So what would you suggest? If we look at the EV space right now, we, you would think that, man, alive, everybody's really bullish on this EV thing, and, and uh, it's the wave of the future, and um, therefore, uh, there's fleets right now in the thousands out there running EV applications, BEV applications, um, hydrogen applications, et cetera, et cetera. The reality of the situation, my friends, and I hate to burst a lot of bubbles out there, is that the Class 8 truck space right now is dominated by diesel. Just, I just want you to let that sink in a little bit, okay? So when you sit back and you listen to the Nicola Camp talk about all of these great things that they're doing, all of these great initiatives that they're putting into play, all these great ideas that they have, it is all, and I do mean all, aimed at penetrating the very reality that I just laid before you, that the diesel-dominated present right now is looking to be reduced by the introduction of these new technologies. And I'm here to tell you, it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened. Hylion and their penetration right now is immaterial. It does not matter. Really, in the grand scheme of things, what are they trying to do with these 11 Innovation Council members? When we're talking about 200 uh, uh, orders backed by deposits, it's immaterial. It doesn't mean squat, okay? <laughs> Bullish shareholders are out there being like, God dang, Ryan, really? God, are you going to go there? 2,000 reservation uh, back order book? It doesn't mean squat. Not anymore. It doesn't mean squat. When we're talking about the reality of the very industry that these companies are looking to penetrate, their penetration rate right now is futile, is futile. They're at zero, zero penetration. There is none. There is no penetration. There is no H2. There is no renewables. There is no CNG to speak about. There's probably 1% of the 100% that's dominated by diesel that I would give credit to CNG. And although the H2 channel would like to suggest that there are no rigs out there that are running off of compressed natural gas, head out of ass and come into reality, all right? The, the, what is going on in nature right now with the reality, which reality is coming out my ears, okay? Most of the time, I'm a very, very natural applicator. And if I thought, by God, this EV movement was huge, God, 50% of the rigs out there right now are dominating uh, the class eight space. My friends, that's not happening. 
That's not happening. And I lump Hylion into this as well, which speaks to the futile effort to try to cross compare these right now and who's winning out at $5 a share and $3.30 respectively. They're both getting clubbed. Come on, come on. You want to invest in a, in a, in a good company? Invest in Cummins for crying out loud, invest in Landstar. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, if, if you want to invest in Tesla because they're uh, opportunity to penetrate class eight, and I do emphasize opportunity, you can go ahead and do that. But Tesla is not a class eight player either. There is zero penetration, zero. We are, are in the extreme early innings of a game that has been defined over the last hundred years plus in shipping and logistics and the durability and predictability that has been uh, provided through diesel application. Okay. Now, again, back to my political, <laughs> if they heard that, they would be like, that's why the world is going to hell, Ryan. That's why the world is ending in 10 years. That's why the polar ice caps are melting. B bullshit. Okay. That, that's, that's not reality. You can believe what you want. Uh, do I believe it, that uh, things are changing globally with the climate? I do. And that's where a lot of my conviction lies with, look, when we step back and we look at these opportunities in the EV space, they're all aimed at providing a cleaner solution for the future. Cleaner. Based against what? The sheer reality that I just spoke about. Right now, every single day, the number of gallons that are being consumed right now of diesel is dominating our transport and logistics uh, sector, okay? And to, to, to suggest somehow that next year that's going to change in whatever degree, form, or fashion you can speculate on, uh, what it's going to look like in five years in whatever form or fashion you can speculate on, or what it's going to look like in 10 years in whatever form and fashion you can speculate on is really the game right now at the time of filming this video. I'm sure that things will transpire in a way down the line that is going to give us much more color on how things are going to evolve from now in moving us away from the reality of the situation and perhaps maybe leveraging some of this technology that we're speaking about now. Is it fair to suggest that Hylion is not going to win now? Is it fair to suggest that Nikola is not going to win now? Should I just put my allegiance with Hylion now and raise my green flag on the independent investor channel because they are going to be the end all, albeit winner in penetrating the current reality? It's stupid, right? It makes no sense at all. So when we look at it now, I want you guys to understand the opportunity when we put it in that context and understand the reality of the situ situation right now with regard to diesel is king, diesel is king right now. And certain people uh, with their political influences would be like, yeah, I know it keeps me up at night. It doesn't keep me up at night. That's just the sheer reality of it. Just wake up and smell, have a cup of coffee, wake up, pull your head out of the backside and, and enter into the real world. It's fantastic sometimes to actually enjoy the really real world as, to pull, as opposed to your alternate uh, universe. The reality is that the mandates are in, both from a state and federal perspective. The 40,000 credits that have come through the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, those are very real. Whether or not you agree with the law or not, or whether or not you agree that the stock market really took it well when it was signed into law, uh, more spending um, as we've spent more than any other society, which is the major threat to the economy right now. Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about um, the fact that we're spending more money now than we ever have, and it's, it could potentially bring everything down to, uh, to its knees. Uh, so if, if I've ever suggested that maybe now is the time to go ahead and, and create that prepper bunker, maybe, maybe you want to do that um, because our government is out of control. It's out of control. If it was aimed at actually helping things and the people who are the green initiative people would suggest that these small carve outs uh, in the mandate that actually help this EV sector is actually a good thing. I, I don't know, because in reality, until we start to chip away at that reality, it's futile in nature. It doesn't mean a damn thing. A unless these companies, whether it be Hylion or Nikola or Tesla or Hyzon, is actually able to penetrate 
and lower that 99% number that I spoke about to actually increase the amount of rigs that are being turned off of the OEM lines that are going to be introduced in the fleet and providing that bottom line TCO to these fleets, none of this talk week to week matters. Let me share with you an intimate detail about this week's deliberation on the Hylion video. I was actually tempted to stop doing these altogether. Mm. Uh, and I thought long and hard about it. Um, and I was back and forth on the decision, full force uh, to, to throw in the towel. Um, part of me is getting to the end of my, uh, end of my rope, um, not with the stock holding, not with the company, and not with the damn good people that are part of this community, uh, but for the sheer reality of um, the sheer reality that it's starting to become a little less um, real for me. Because the more, the more I'm insistent upon sharing my insights with this, um, and I do it from a very, very unappreciative perspective, um, just like Tesla uh, um, on YouTube, um, winners will be chosen uh, and losers will be, uh, will be lost. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very, very realistic applicator, and I have a heart too. And for as hard as I work on this project, trying to pay forward, try to pay forward um, from my perspective, what I see in this opportunity, um, it, it's, it's, it's always of interest to me to continually be slapped in the face with trying to pay this forward and really trying to use the power of social media to allow people a different opinion, a different introduction, a different twist to what it is that this company is trying to do. Uh, and for the first time, um, I've been 100% convicted on this. Boom, look forward to it. Yeah, come on. And I dropped the Sunday video. This was the first time where I've just almost just said F it and thrown in the towel um, and, and, and gone on about not devoting one hour of my life every single week to this for the sheer sake that it's not appreciated at all. It's not appreciated. And I'm not talking about you. Um, it's not appreciated by the people who have selectively uh, selected their favorites out there and have chosen, uh, made the conscious decision to actually ignore people like myself. Uh, and I, I think it's a mistake. Um, that's my personal opinion. I do feel shunned by it. Uh, and that's uh, what kind of drove part of my decision making this week and deliberation of actually not even coming out with this product at all. Now, what's the difference? Who cares? Um, I'm just a, a small niche on YouTube. I do this by my own admission. I'm not paid for it. Um, I do it free of charge and I do it out of the goodness of my heart, which I tell you what, man, in this life, there is very, very few things out there that are as genuine as mine and are as equally as unappreciated as mine as well. And that's probably the sheer reality as to why I'm sitting in front of you right now. Uh, to continue to beat the drum on this and to continue to share my sentiments going forward um, and piss me off enough and I'll just continue to do this indefinitely. Um, you'll always have somebody that you choose not to support at all, zero, not one acknowledgement, not one piece of support, not one iota of appreciation whatsoever. I'll just do it to spite you. Mm -hmm. I really will. All right. The reality, in addition to the mandates that are in right now from the federal government side and the state government, um, the customer demand. So you talk about this opportunity over here. Okay, what is going to go hand in hand with the reality of the situation right now? You can say, well, if since diesel is dominating the current environment, will we shift away from diesel enough to be material? That is an awesome question, that of which nobody ever asks me. Nobody in the H2 camp would suggest that, gosh, I don't know, maybe this is a pipe dream. <laughs> you know, maybe, yeah, we'll get a small amount of penetration, but nothing that would be deemed immaterial. Nothing that we could assign metrics to to suggest that Hylion is going to turn out thousands and thousands of units, which is part of the thorn in my side when I always talk about that initial investor presentation. What information did they have at the time that they turned out that data to suggest that they could turn out thousands of units by 2022? Well, well, that's about, I, I don't know. yeah, you put undue reliance and in information that we 
submitted to the SEC and they accept it. Therefore, if they accept it, we can say whatever it is that we want. Um, the sheer fact of the matter is you didn't have that data. You didn't. You took an educated guess based on what you were required to project for people uh, and you got burned. You got burned. And now the reality is your stock price is in the toilet. Uh, and you should take some ownership over that. No, I don't. I do not believe that you're doing everything you can possibly do to drive that shareholder value. Is that three dollars a share, my friend? You've earned it. You have earned it, and you've got a lot to do to pull yourself out of the dungeon uh, and actually provide some level of uh, material value here in what is perceived to be a valueless company. Valueless. You're being provided zero, zero value for your company right now. With the cash on hand, the five hundred thousand or five hundred million on the books, um, the company's valued at six hundred million. You're telling me your business right now, you just purchased thirty-seven million of a new technology. So half of that is based on whatever the stock market is valuing your business at right now at six hundred million. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. You should be embarrassed. Um, the digression in the stock price you've earned. Um, you know, I, however you're going to unfold this story going forward, I'm all ears. Um, in Thomas, we trust. This is the the, the new reality. Um, maybe they turn the numbers out in 2024. Um, maybe we get to 2024 and they push it to 2028. Um, maybe we get to 2028 and they push it to 2035. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe inevitably we just continually push with this company and it does not have the ability to turn out the numbers in thousands and thousands, like we suggest. The sheer opportunity that I speak about and the reality and the need of this product defines my bullish conviction on these two eventually coming together at some point in the future and giving them a shot, giving them a shot. And the way Hylion is going about doing this with the assistance of the OEMs through the OEM hubs, I say that tongue in cheek, we haven't heard anything about that. That must have been a pie in the sky idea that has just been turned out. We have, we have heard no progress whatsoever uh, on whether or not Peterbilt even knows who Hylion is. Uh, really, from a small shareholder's position, I say, well, come on, Ryan, come on, Ryan. They're, they're partnered with them. They're, 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 really? Where's the color? I could provide some color through Twitter every single day on their relationship and their advancement of that said goal of mass commercialization with Peterbilt. But Hylion chooses to share nothing, zero, no, nothing, no information whatsoever. Ah, it's okay. They're a very conservative company that doesn't want to share a lot of information a lot of the time. Okay. All right. Maybe, maybe that's the way to success, to provide material benefits to shareholders. I, I don't know material benefits on the company side. I mean, who gives a shit about the shareholders, but just something material on the company side to show that we're actually walking a realistic path rather than a made up one. Oh, Hylion would never do that. <laughs> Wake up people. Okay. Wake up. All right. The quicker with this opportunity and any other opportunity you take in the stock market to not just blindly follow would probably be the best piece out of my playbook you can possibly take. And again, there's going to be people out there that are like, Ryan, I, I don't know, man. That's, they've already shut me off. I'm tired. I don't want to watch this one. I'll catch the next one when Ryan's in a better mood. I'm in a fine mood. Has nothing to do with my criticism over a stock, all right? But the customers are demanding that. So when we sh sh we're looking at the reality of what's percolating over here in the reality section, the diesel, the need to shift, the customer... Uh, demand over that shift to a more agnostic type of a future, moving goods and not be so reliant upon diesel. Right now, we're getting as much of an idea about how pollutive the trucking industry can be being dominated by diesel at present. Okay. So therefore, it begs the question, what is the sheer reality and what are the opportunities out there that are going to help augment the current reality? And, and it'd be fun to see how it unfolds. I, I want to talk a little bit about this third structure, and then we'll wrap it up for the week, because I, I, I'm obviously very spirited. I'm, I obviously put some charge out there on Twitter. Um, I hesitate to do that because I know I'm just going to get beat to shit and people aren't going to really understand me 
really trying to challenge. And I'm the only one that does it. There's people who agree with me, but nobody goes on there and actually generates that discussion about, I don't know, maybe not being so acceptive of the current performance. I don't know. I don't think there's anything about the current stock performance that's acceptable. It's not acceptable. And again, I give you the analogy of actually looking in the mirror and asking yourself, have I actually returned great shareholder value in 2022? No. Have I actually provided good shareholder value in 2021? No. Have I actually provided good shareholder value in 2020? Yeah, probably. On the initial hype to 58, I guess. <laughs> I guess. There probably could have been more responsibility in never coming out with that 2020 investor presentation. Um, because that's something that I look at and it'll always remain as a scar with me. I'm going to make money with the company. Money's fine. You guys understand that my whole goal here, making money is great, but pursuing a plan and seeing that plan through means a hell of a lot more to me than the renderings of the plan. I expect to make money with this opportunity. Absolutely. And people are going to come on and they're going to be like, you're an awesome investor. You're great. I've had a lot of people come on. If Hylion does go great, you're going to do great with the channel. Has nothing to do with why I do this. First and foremost, the reason why I do this is because I know that there's people who tune into me that actually have a stake in this company. That's priority number one. Me, I can take care of myself. But priority number one, if I have the audacity to come onto a social media uh, presence and actually share my opinions with a mass of shareholders out there that know also hold the shares, that's priority number one. And I dig deep. I dig deep to try to deliver some level of perspective for those individuals. That's, that's priority number one. All right. Priority number two is really just to educate, make people understand that we are in a very interesting time here, stepping into an opportunity as it relates to the sheer reality of, of present. And, and that's kind of what we're looking to do. But the specs... When we start to look at Hylion and the specs, and we're looking at the actual overall range of a thousand, they could produce so much information on this and they are failing to do so. Okay. Uh, what testing has been done on this? Are we going to wait for the fleets to introduce this and find out that the range is actually not a thousand? It's 820. That's going to be killer for the credibility of this company, because they've always just consistently beat the drum of a thousand mile range. I believe they get it. So why not share that with the grander opportunity? Are they waiting? I'll be there for the wait. No problem at all. I'll be there for that catalyst when the stock shoots above 10. I'll be there. It's no problem. But again, I don't, I don't really put a, a whole lot of emphasis in that. I put emphasis in understanding that I'm invested in a company right now, and I expect that company to be as transparent as they possibly can. It's just that simple. The driver experience, something that Nicola does not want to talk about at all. Uh, the downtime that could be uh, rendered by the BEV fleets, right? Uh, and also the efficiency, okay? The Corno technology is supposed to be 20% less or more efficient than um, your traditional generator, even burning traditional and conventional fuels. See, I think that speaks to the more of the reality of the future than anything. And I, I think that even a lot of the bears would come back and say, well, Thomas Healy believes that hydrogen fuel cell is the way of the future. I don't, I don't agree. Um, until that's made uh, in, in reality, I'm entitled to my opinion to suggest that a more fuel agnostic future is the future. And I'm going to say it right now. It's September of 2022. When we get to 2025, and the certain percentage of the fleet is dominated by hydrogen fuel cell, I'll eat crow. But why are people not suggesting that there is another way out there? Thomas Healy alluded to this and would suggest that ammonia might be introduced into the mix here. And I cringe every time I hear that because I know the particulars of ammonia. It's not, it's not happy stuff, guys. But it is the sheer reality of what is being actually tested right now with regard to viable fuels into the future, why wouldn't fleets want to have the opportunity to actually engage in the fuel trade that they want to engage in and those fuels that are going to drive the bottom line efficiency in their specific applications? The one size fits all here, guys, I, again, independent investor, independent investor giving it to you as if I'm the black sheep 
actually standing up on the hill watching all my white sheep friends run down the trail all together. And I'm like, you guys are a bunch of morons. You're running toward a cliff. And I just merely suggest that perhaps maybe there's another way. I don't know. Maybe there's another way. The, the, the Carno knowledge to me actually blossomed my understanding of the opportunity and opened it up rather than close it down. Thomas Healy continues to suggest that a hydrogen fuel cell, Hypertruck ERX, is going to be the wave of the future. Tongue in cheek, he says in the same sentence that when the fuel is available and the infrastructure supports that type of initiative, what if it never does? Then the hypertruck fuel hydrogen fuel cell is dead on arrival and the agnostic future will dominate going forward. So when we're talking about the specs, I think what we're talking about right now in the evolution of the technology speaks to uh, a wide open future and to sit down and be able to provide optionality to fleets rather than here's a one size fits all type of an application, either accept it or, or don't. You must accept this or don't. I, I don't think that's the right approach. I, I really don't. And again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's my independent application. Maybe it's the small country brain that I was blessed with. But he, here's the funny thing. Um, discretion is worth its weight in gold in this world. Discretion. Uh, and intuition is also worth its weight in gold. And Discretion and intuition coupled together make for the I2 in its very raw molecular sense, okay? And that's what I share with you guys. And when I sit back and I, of a clear mind, apply my discretion and my intuition based on what is going on right now, Thomas Healy says that H2 is the wave of the future. I don't believe him. I don't believe him. I believe that he's playing gamesmanship. Mm -hmm. If there's any sales ploy out there to be had, mentioning hydrogen right now is probably in their best interest because you see how much traction they're getting with renewables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Zero. Zero. Okay. I digress. And I would suggest that Nikola is not getting much more traction in a future that I would consider to be futile at this point. It's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. Um, I think, again, with the technology that the Nikola folks have been able to bring to bear is remarkable. I think it's remarkable. <laughs> but it is remarkable on the books. Uh, and there is a huge question in my mind as to how that is going to unfold in reality uh, over the coming years. And again, I know there's people who out there on YouTube, it's amazing. There are some people out there that can actually tell the future. Uh -huh. uh, there's a few uh, channels out there that um, would profess to be able to tell the future. Um, they would uh, profess to have you believe that their opinion is more uh, valuable than others uh, because they are um, spoke to uh, by aliens on other planets that actually tells them what it is that you don't know but need to know only if you subscribe to their channel. Let me tell you a little secret. Okay, this comes back to my intuition a little bit. Telling the future is not possible. Just, just, just a little, little tidbit of information. And for, the, for those of you guys who, who have wondered your entire life, um, <clears throat> ghosts are not real either. Okay, just, just thought I'd let you know. So you can kind of wake up to the, sheer reality of what's going on right now. Uh, approach this opportunity with a level head. Uh, approach it with, yes, conviction. Uh, at the same time, when you do make a stake in a specific company, you do have to have some hypothesis about where this thing could go in the future. With the sheer caveat that you may be dead wrong, you may be dead wrong, how this thing is going to unfold over the next coming years and how this thing is going to develop is anybody's guess at this point. It is why we do the weekly conversation week in and week out to try to further the discussion. It's not to pick fun at other channels. It's not to bring anybody down. It's not to belittle anybody. Business is business. 
And some of the things I think that are being discussed right now, unfortunately, detract from the very conversation that I'm looking to fortify. Very, very simple. The investment as the stock price goes, guys, the, the real estate market is rolling off right now. And I know there's a lot of people who have bought six hundred, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar houses. Um, they're going to lose fifty to one hundred grand. Um, the the very sheer interest of, to me is um, the people who will justify buying a seventy five thousand to a hundred thousand dollar car, but they will be quick to downplay the opportunity that exists with this company right now, and the upside potential uh, when compared to the potential downside risk that you're taking knowing what we've known about this company and where it's been and where it could potentially go, I find, I find the, the sheer disconnect between those two scenarios as being um, very eye-opening. And I would suggest for you guys, I don't know where the future, what the future holds. I have no idea. I don't. Um, there are going to be people who come to me after this company does get a little traction, uh, 10, 12 bucks, 10, 12 bucks would be really nice for my own sanity because I'm, I'm at the end of my rope with the failed uh, lack of acknowledgement of the poor uh, stock performance. And it seems as if Hylion is completely satisfied with the current status quo. Uh, my friends, I tweet to Twitter and I speak about this so elegantly on my weekly dialogue so I can have a voice and let you know from the sheer bottom of my heart and from the depths of my mind, my friends, I am not happy with the current status quo. And I think it is in our best interest to challenge that status quo and say, hold on a second. Um, is there a potential to do better? Um, where some people would suggest, no, 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 there, there is no potential. They can do no, no better and, and they can do no wrong either. Uh, trust at all cost. Uh, I'm not in that camp. Uh, I challenge and always would suggest that there is always a better way out there. There is always uh, an opportunity to do better because competition is going to be forthcoming. Competition will be very, very real. And it will be the very opportunity that I speak about with this company and the sheer reality of what's going on now and how those two things are going to come together and transpire going forward over the coming months and over the coming years. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for this uh, passionate weekly update on Hylion. Stay tuned to the channel. It's not going away. I'm not going to stop doing this because I feel thwarted, uh, and I have been. Uh, I will continue to be the unappreciated armpit of Hylion uh, Holdings. Uh, I will continue to beat the drum and forward you to those best sources of information that I know out there and available on Hylion, myself being one of them, no doubt about it. Uh, and we will continue to beat this drum on this opportunity. And once the momentum starts to shift, uh, I may actually look to um, remind some people of the scars that were actually created through what has been a, a real war over the last couple of years of this company coming through, through to public markets, uh, dragging shareholders through the minutia of muddy water uh, by not having a better handle on where they were in the evolution of their commercial uh, progress, uh, which was uh, at, at, at least two years delayed, at least two years. They were not ready. They were not ready. And the information that uh, they are sharing now actually sheds light onto where they were two years ago. But I will continue to beat this drum on the channel. If you do appreciate that message, you want to subscribe to the channel, uh, leave your comments. It'll strike up a robust dialogue. It always does from week to week. I look forward to that engagement on the channel. And in all reality, guys, I need to encourage each and every one of you guys to do your own due diligence. I spoke about it in this video. What makes sense for me is not going to make sense for you. And the, 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 the whole idea in carving out to this opportunity for you is to define what is appropriate for you and, and to adjust accordingly. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future. Thank you.